Tower Records presents Man-Thing in Night of the Laughing Dead. The swamp, a bubbling bed of life of which you are a part. Once you were a man, a chemist named Ted Salas, but the serum that was to have made you a super soldier combined with strange forces in the swamp to make you over into the Man-Thing. But your former existence seems a far-off dream to you, doesn't it? Less than a dream, in fact. No longer able to reason, you now function on emotion, those few which you still feel. You can feel what others feel. You can understand those feelings. But emotions are often as ambiguous as words, and sometimes they are even more so. Consider this weeping clown, for example. What does he feel now as he raises a gun to his temple? as the tears roll down his grease-painted cheeks. You may never know, for across the marshland comes a single, devastatingly final shot. That prods you into action. You attempt to hurry to the source of the evil sound. But no matter, you are too late. It was too late before you began. And all you can do is stare through hazy, crimson eyes at the little clown's corpse and reflect on the buried fragments of memories brought to the surface by the ugly sight. You remember how the man you were fought to protect his scientific discovery. You remember more, the blinding moments of escape, the knowledge that he had to destroy the vial, and perhaps, at the same time, destroy himself. And so, Ted Salas did what had to be done. Memory. You recall the transformation, the mingling of the chemical with the swamp waters around him, the stark shock to his metabolism, and the bitter ending of his sanity. Slowly, mercifully, the memories end. And the man who was once Ted Salas, whose body has become that of a swamp-roaming creature, forgets again what once he knew. It's better that way. It's better. As those thoughts fade, your gaze falls upon something at the dead man's foot. But you wonder, could these little scrawls on this thin white leaf explain why the man took his own life? But wait, another flash of recollection from your former life. Foo? Few? Funeral. Humans bury their dead, so this one must be laid to rest. And so you take the body deep into the marsh, while events take shape miles away that will transform this already somber evening into something more terrifying by far. The only rooms left are my deluxe. Come on, Richard, we'll find another... Uh-uh, lady, not tonight. I'm exhausted. I'll just bet. <laughs> That'll be uh, $22.40, including tax. These two young people are Richard Rory and Ruth Hart, two old friends of yours, Man-Thing. Well, that was a hassle, wasn't it? I'll say. I'll bet he's a reform school reject. But, you know, I haven't got the energy to argue with him. Not now. Maybe we can go to the carnival tomorrow. Carnival? Sure. See the trucks over there? They must be playing a town around here. Boss, Mr. Garvey, Daryl's gone. Run away. We've got to go after him. We can't lose the show's only clown. And besides, he was terribly upset tonight. I'm afraid of what he might do. Please, Mr. Garvey, if he does something rash, you'll be out. I'll be the boss of this three-ring loony farm, just like before, you hear? And if you don't like it, you can scram. Holy cow, Ruth. Did you see that? Richard, wait. You don't know... Them's your options, Haley. Either you... Huh? Hold it right there, Buster. Oh, run along, Sonny. You heard the man, Twoip. Scram. See? He's the boss. He's my boss. And I don't like nobody messing with my boss. Oh, boy. No, sir, I don't like it at all. Now I'd advise you to blow while you still got legs to walk on. It ain't wise to get Trag mad at you twice. Trag? The world's strongest man? Gosh, that's who hit me. Whoever you are, you've got to get out of here. She's right, Richard. Please, take me with you. Hey, boss. Ayla's leaving, too. Step on it, lover. Trag doesn't look happy about this. In fact, I think he and De Boss plan to follow us. I don't care about them. I just want to find Daryl. My poor clown. First, we find another motel. I've got to get to sleep. We can go Clarabelle hunting tomorrow, Miss... You haven't told us your name, Miss, or why you're looking for a clown. I'm sorry. It's Ayla Prentice. I'm a high-wire artist with the carnival, and I'm trying to keep my clown from destroying himself. You see, I love Daryl, but I betrayed him. He stopped laughing, stopped living, just wanted to die. Stop! Pull over there! That's his car! Sure, okay. There he is, and thank the Lord he's alive! Daryl, I'm here! Daryl! Daryl, 
What's wrong? Can't you see me? It's Ayla. Why, why doesn't he answer? He acts as if he doesn't know who I am. Maybe his mind is just totally snapped. That's so. It's my fault. Whoa! Where do you think you're going? It's dangerous out there. Let go of me. I have to go after him. It's my fault. He's like this. Richard, look at this. I think it's a suicide note. So Ayla's not exaggerating. The little guy is in a bad way. To say the least. Okay, then. We go. But slowly, carefully. Remember, the next log you step on could have teeth. But as the three young people forge cautiously into the tepid waters of your home, two somewhat more sinister figures race along the Swampside Highway in pursuit. Sure, I'm sure they took this road. I think. You think? Ha! Huh. You don't know how, Trag. Oh, boss, I try. Hey, boss, look at Up the road, there. It's the clown. Dancing in some kind of spotlight. Only... Where's the light coming from? He don't even look real. Boss, I'm scared. Slow down, you fool. You'll hit him. We don't want to kill him outright. Swerve, you idiot. Swerve. I'm swerving. But we're going to hit that tree. The truck's gas tank explodes on impact, and the vehicle becomes a Nova Bright Inferno. And the little clown stands watching gleefully. Good evening, Trag. How are you? I am fine. Where is Garvey? <laughs> Why, you little punk, when I get out from under this... You'll kill me. <laughs> Make me die. <laughs> Where's Garvey? <laughs> you blasted right, I'll kill you. I'm mad now. Oh, my. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> but he'll still have to catch me. <laughs> and he can't, because <laughs> he's too big and slow and <laughs> stupid. Maybe. But at least I ain't no walking joke. And not too far away. Listen, voices. It sounded like trap. I didn't hear anything. Are you sure? No. It's hard to be sure of anything in here. I didn't realize it would be this dark. There are so many little sounds, so many shadows. It's... Oh! That's no shadow. It's some kind of... Here. Oh, whoa. It's got Daryl! Holy cow! It's the man thing! Take it easy, Ayla. I know this is hard to believe, but that creature won't harm us or Daryl. If that is the clown he's holding, he may be protecting you. Even so, you better not stop him. Right. We'll move closer, slowly. And so, not suspecting that the man they seek to save is already dead, they inch their way through the dense swamp growth toward the spot where you stand. The hunk of earth you've chosen for the man's final resting place. And when they push aside the last clump of green, when they see the clown's limp body and the heavy branch in your mottled hand, Ava draws the logical but wrong conclusion and panics. Heedless of the seeming danger you present, she rushes to the side of her fallen friend. Daryl, wake up! It's, it's Ayla! Daryl! Oh, no! He's dead! Dead! You can feel this woman's deep sorrow. Your own head bows. But then, another powerful emotional force makes you whirl, startled. How, how could you? I'd almost come to think of you as human. But now, get out! Get out of here, or I'll... Anger, aimed directly at you, emanating from a man you assume to be your friend. Why? What did you do? Why does he loathe you so? You cannot reason. And even if you could, you lack the vocal mechanism with which you might explain to them their error. So you merely skulk away. Once you have gone, tears flow copiously. I didn't believe the Man-Thing was capable of this. In fact, it still strikes me as odd that I could face him down so easily. Unless... I never told him how I felt. I'm so ashamed. Oh, wow! How could I have been so blind? Ayla, look. He's been shot. The monster didn't kill him. But that's impossible. We didn't hear any gun go off. And we just saw Daryl alive a few minutes ago. Didn't we? You know, I'm beginning to wonder about that. So am I. We all saw something back there. But what? A ghost, maybe. Come on, Ruth. Under the circumstances, isn't that a little bit morbid? Nice try, Twerp. Play acting that clown's dead to protect him from me. Trag! Come on, clownsy. Stand up and get beat to death like a man, you hear? Stop it, Trag! You can't kill a corpse. Trag, I said stop it! You said... 
Why should the world's strongest man care what you said? Perhaps you are the reason Trag should care. For despite your puzzlement at his earlier outburst, you still know Rory as a good man. Who's the luck in the gorilla suit? And Trag's assault upon him enrages you. Whoever he is, he ain't on my side. So he must be on yours. So? Hmm. He's a blasted living slime pool. But if he figures that's gonna stop me, this is a challenge for me. I know I can take any man, but a monster, that's something new. I sliced right through him. He has torn from you some small bits of your being, yet still you stand, to all appearances, unharmed. I tore into you, ripped you apart, and you didn't even feel it. You are waiting for one reaction, fear. For if this man, or any man, fears you, your very touch can burn his flesh to ashes. But Trag is not afraid, only amazed. He attacks again. But this time, it is your strength which prevails. And in the absence of fear, you resort to other, even more brutal, means to destroy your foe. But the memories return once more. The visions of needless, wanton slaughter. And though your instincts advise you otherwise, you allow him to live. And as you make that choice, the most bizarre event of this night occurs. Holy leaping! What is it? What's happening to him? Or is it happening to us? Are we all losing our minds? The warm night air has suddenly turned chill. As you stare along with the humans at the skeletal specter that has risen from Daryl's lifeless shell. What are you? What do you want? Why, I want to make you laugh. I want smiles and guffaws and grins and good cheer. And most of all, peace. What does any clown want but to make people happy? But I could not go on making others laugh when all I felt inside was pain, when the love I gave was not returned. But now, my soul is free. I shall feel mortal pain no more. And so I can laugh, laugh forever. <laughs> you look and listen to the specter of a clown before you. And all that you know, Man-Thing, is that never has laughter made you feel so sad.